Good morning, church. My name is Lori Moreland, and I'm on staff at Heights Church, and I'm also a volunteer leader for Junior High Ministries. Today, we're continuing on with our thread about love in 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm going to be talking specifically about the portion of verse 5 that says, love does not demand its own way. When I first started rolling this verse around in my mind, I thought, it's so obvious that demanding is not love. What more needs to be seen talked about on the subject? And yet, I know that there are subtleties that we often overlook, especially when we're called to evaluate our own behavior. You know, to be sure, we can always see so much more clearly where we're looking at others and seeing that they're missing the mark. But when it comes to self-examination, it can be a little bit more difficult to tease out those areas where we're sidestepping the level that God is calling us to. Demanding seems like it's such in-your-face behavior, doesn't it? It paints such an unappealing picture with words that are like critical, finicky, fussy, nitpicking, scrutinizing, hard to please. We think about people who bark orders, or we think about the two-year-old that's throwing a temper tantrum on the floor, or people who call over the manager because they're dissatisfied with something. But sometimes we dress up demanding and we call it by another name. We might say, I have high standards, or I have discerning taste, or I thought the manager ought to know how the customers are being treated. And sometimes it can be a lot more subtle, or call it backdoor demanding, if you will. It might sound something more like this. If you loved me, you would, or if you want me to do this, then you have to do that for me, or I work so hard and I'm so tired, can't you just, or you're so strong and I have been feeling so ill. It's demands disguised by words that are wheedling, sometimes they're shaming, and oftentimes they're manipulating, but it's always laced with an expectation. But what does God require of me? Jesus said, do unto others what you'd like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. The love that we're called to as followers of Jesus is other-centered, not self-centered. It's not a state of victimhood or codependency either. As Jesus followers, we can sometimes get this confused because it looks so much the same on the outside, but it's really a matter of our heart. When we allow God to break away the stony, stubborn parts of our heart, he'll give us a tender, responsive heart. Like he said in Ezekiel uh, verse th chapter 36, verse 28, then we'll begin to desire what he desires for us. And because God is love, and love doesn't demand its own way, our thoughts and our actions fall in love, line with God because we'll want what he wants. And we'll begin to love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other, such as Romans 12 verse 10 says. And that's the kind of love that extends to everyone we meet. But I know, we're all human, and calluses will form on our hearts again. What do we do then? We come before God with a humble, not a demanding heart, and we confess our broken places before the great healer with great expectation. So we take time to be in his presence, and we let him do a work in us. Only through our relationship with Christ can we overcome these obstacles in our life and these broken places. So I pray for you, my friends, that as you go forward today, if you begin to see a place in your heart where you have been exhibiting a demanding behavior, whether it's right up front in your face or it's something more subtle, I pray that you take it before God and confess it to him and ask him to make those changes in you. And I pray that you have a blessed and wonderful day. We'll see you again soon.